Hi everyone, it's Helen here and thank you very much for joining me for today's video. So today is a very easy and simple project. We are going to be making a Paddington suitcase. Now all you're going to be needing for this is basic supplies and I'm going to be adding the ephemera and the papers. Now the whole Paddington collection is now back in stock at Craft Stash and I'll list everything down below that I'm using here today. I've just selected the ephemera and the paper pack. I had my eye on this last year when it first came out and I missed it. Um, so I jumped straight back on it when it came back because I had this particular project in mind. So we have this lovely little suitcase here just made from basic craft cardstock. We open it up and inside we have, oh, it's upside down, we have a mini album. There we go. This is made from one sheet of A4 cardstock. So we open it up just like that and we have some tags in here as well. So hence why I had my eye on the papers and the tags. Right, so let's jump straight into the tutorial. Okay, so we're gonna be starting off with just an A4 sheet of A4 craft card. I've bought mine in a big pack like this. If I could find the um, where I got this from, I will link it down below. It's probably a craft stash or Amazon. I can't remember which one. Um, right, so I'm gonna start off with this trimmer because it has the marking there for A5 but my what I'm doing here can be done um, with the US size as well so if you have is it eight and a half by eleven um, this will work as well so whatever size paper you have chop it in half And we're going to do exactly the same thing on both of these to make both sides of the suitcase. Right, so grab yourself a scoreboard. We've got a landslide here. There we go. I'm going to put this away. Okay, so we're going to do the same on all four sides. So we're going to score at quarter of an inch and one inch. Okay, turn it. Quarter of an inch and one inch and basically this little section here that we're doing at the quarter inch is going to be the support for the suitcase so it closes nicely and each side kind of doesn't overlap or go inside each other just to quick, quickly show you here all of this goes round and it supports everything okay do the same on the other one Okay, so now I've done that, keeping hold of my bone folder here, and we're going to do some folding. So this is really easy still. In fact, the whole thing's easy. The most complicated bit is the cutting, and even that is very simple, because I'm going to show you step by step which bits you need to cut off. Right, so just go around with your bone folder and get those folded in nicely. Okay, so don't worry about writing any of these measurements down or the score lines and things because I have a website and a blog post specific to this project and that will be linked down below. If you click on that, it will take you to this video, a little bit of writing, some photos and all the products that I've used today. So it's it's all in one place for you. Okay, so we're going to do some cutting now. I'm going to start off with the paper trimmer first. And we're going to cut off one side. So one side, one long side, is going to lose that little quarter inch strip. So do the same on the other one. There we go. And now I'm just going to mark out with my pen which bits you need to trim off. So we need to keep create a flap from this little square just here. So we're going to be losing this and this square here and this little square well they're not, they're not squares these rec this rectangle this rectangle this square we're going to cut along this line here and then we need to taper just like that so all of this is going to be cut on this side, this side and this side. Okay, so let's show you how we do that. I like to just go in with my scissors, go up that line first, 
and then I'm just going to go in and taper straight away. It's going to cut down, no pun intended, it's going to cut down on our cutting on how many times we have to make our little snips and there we go you should have something that looks like that now do the same on the other side okay so I'm going to have these two facing each other where I made those um, snips so on the, on the outside edges is where we have the quarter of an inch side pieces so let's grab my next few bits which i have not labeled so let's see i've got a few bits here i must not get these mixed up with my scraps <laughs> i should have labeled them okay so this is going to be our hinge this measures it's six and a quarter yes six and a quarter by one inch and we're going to score that in half so that's half an inch I've got my scoreboard listed down below as well okay so on this suitcase I have popped the hinge on the outside but I'm going to see what it's like with the hinge on the inside as well so I'm going to experiment and see which one I like the best if it goes wrong you will witness it okay so I'm going to grab some red tape here because this is what's going to help me get an immediate stick whilst the glue dries so I'm going to use the tape and the glue and I'm going to add the tape before I trim off the edges because this is going to give me edge to edge um, tape coverage once I've trimmed it and I always use my Tim Holtz scissors because they are uh, titanium coated if you've cut red tape before you know it gunks up your scissors and these are a lot slower to uh, gunk up. They do gunk up eventually, but that's fine. Okay, press this down. This is going to press, especially with craft cardstock, the fibres are much looser than your average cardstock. So you really must press this and press out all of the, um, the air bubbles. It's just going to push the adhesive right into the fibres. Okay, so now grab your scissors. And then we can make our little tapers either end and as you can see I have the edge to edge there and if you want to you can go straight up to the score line with that tape as well that's probably more advisable instead of leaving a gap okay let's pop this on now as I said I'm going to be popping this in on the inside like so on this one is on the outside so you'd pop your tape on this side as you can see the craft cardstock does have a slight variation in color on either side so make sure you get your tape on the right side so have your tape on the this side if you're going to be popping it on the outside and one other thing I need to do is just make sure it's folded both ways just so we have that opening and closing flexibility before we put the box together because it's pretty difficult if you don't do that first so let's get this stuck down I trimmed my nails off last week they were getting too long so off they came and now backing pieces are a little bit of a problem okay so I'm going to use some cosmic shimmer on top of the tape if you've ever used nails and glue when you're doing woodwork it's the same concept the nails keep it in place and the glue is there for the long term so I'm going right up to the score line so I can see the score line and it has that ability to fold so what's what that has done is the tape has stuck that 
straight down and the glue is there for the long term so that glue is still drying but it's in the right place and held firm so do the same on the other side get your glue right up into those corners now butt this up but I still want to see the score line but I don't want to leave so much of a gap that it's going to affect how this closes if you're too far away from the score line you'll get a gap here and you'll have a gap tapering down into a closed position here and a gap this side so we want to avoid that okay and now I'm going to add some more red tape just in little sections to these tabs and I'm going to pop them right up to the score line this is a bit finickety but it's worth it for the um, the finished project I didn't do it on this one and you can see if I open it up it does go a little bit funny here so I do want to make sure that all of my corners are really sharp and closing properly and a way to get to that point is to use your double-sided tape to help you with that and again I'm still going to do some gluing as well but I'm going to make sure that this tape is right up to the score line and that's going to give me some really nice corners Okay, so press everything down again. Okay, and then I'm going to start with these two. No, I'm going to start with this, these two and then I'm going to finish that side. Then I'm going to work on this side and work my way outwards from there. That's just the easiest way that I've found how to do these sorts of boxes. Otherwise, you can't get your hand in and closing the flaps can be a bit of a trouble. Okay, so I'm going to add glue now just to these. Not too much over the tape because I want the tape to take straight away. So just a little bit over the tape. Okay, and then we're going to start closing this together and as you can see I don't have to stand there or sit here for ages waiting for this to um, dry I can move on to the next corner straight away you can use um, hot glue I suppose um, but do do thin layers or otherwise you're going to get bulky bulky corners Okay, so I think this works equally as well with the hinge on the inside as it is on the outside so it does change the look there of the outside of the box and this is more or less just camouflaged and hidden inside there so what I'm going to do now is just going to pop these in and then I'm going to set this aside we're going to finish this suitcase off after we've done the mini album that fits inside because I want all these corners to have a nice chance to dry so we're going to set that aside and we're now going to move on to the mini album now I have made this one before on my YouTube channel I will link it down below it's a very similar project to this one with a suitcase as well but the suitcase is a different size so this suitcase is bigger I will make sure that is linked down below so you're going to be needing um, a piece of paper for this. I'm using A4. And again, this will work any size. So I have my A4 sheet of paper here. I'm not too sure. Do I need my... I'll give it a go. Because it's a very light background. And I want you to see what I'm doing. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, so we're just going to do some folding here. We're not going to do any scoring. 
just the folding. So fold this in half exactly. Now I'm using a, um, a lighter piece of paper. So this is around about 100 GSM, I would say. So it's thicker than your printer paper, but it's, it's quite thin card and um, patterned paper would work for this as well. It wouldn't work if I used craft car cardstock um, I would love to use craft cardstock, but it's just too thick for this project. Okay, so we're then going to fold this in half again. With all of these folds and things like that, it's just going to be too bulky to make um, this particular style of album. Okay, so we're now going to take this section, and again, this folding technique to make this album will work on 12 by 12, it will work on any size as well and this will also give you some pockets okay we now have this and I'm just going to mark with a pen did I put the pen down here we're just going to make a cut from this dot here to this dot there so we're going to cut along there so I'm going to be using my Tim Holtz ruler. You can use a metal ruler. This one has a metal edge just on there. So it's my absolute favorite ruler. And grab yourself a craft knife. And we're just going to cut along that score line between those two dots. So it's basically this intersection and this intersection here. Oops, my ruler did move, but should be all right. Okay, so you should have something that looks like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold these score lines on the opposite way of what I folded them to. So this one, this centre one is fine. So you fold it in half like that, and then we're going to take these two sections and fold them out to make a cross and then we can then fold them so we go from that position take the back one go to the right take the front one and go to the left and they should fold up like that grab your bone folder again where you can grab your ruler and squish it make sure everything is straight and lined up and press everything down we're not done with this yet we are then going to take this one here, this second in from the left flap, I'm going to fold that to make the book and then we are going to fold this one. It kind of wants to do that weird curvature but we'll sort that out in a moment. Or if you don't like the way that goes you can go to the back as well if you don't like the way that looks. Again this is why I like to use the um, a thinner paper for this. Now once you're happy with that, you can line it up so that last bit of cover that went round, I think it was this one here, it can go forwards or backwards. But anyway, I don't want to confuse you guys. Have an experiment and see which way your paper decides which way it likes best basically. So we now have this booklet here. So we have does open funny as well there we go it does open funny like that so we have a pocket here to do some gluing pocket in the center though it goes all the way through and then we have a pocket at the top there as well this one and then we have another one that goes all the way through so we're going to do some gluing now. So just add your glue very thinly here on the edge of this front page. And if you want, you can glue the front page shut completely. I'm just going to give that little bit of a smooshing with my fingers there just to get that closed. And again, I would avoid using tape because when you have an insert that goes in there, it's going to get caught on the tape here. The corner is going to get stuck in there and because this doesn't really dry. It stays sticky. Um, yeah, it's just going to be jiggly jaggly and you're going to get annoyed. 
Okay, so we've got the bottom pocket here, so do the same with this one. So I'm not going to actually decorate this one today, but I do have all of the page mat sizes for this. It's a very, very simple album to make. So I will leave all of the, um, the page mat sizes for the A4 sheet in, um, in the blog post. So there'll be a cutting guide for everything in there. Again, just run your finger along there. And then we're just going to need to glue the bottom. There we go. See, this is why I just do this, because it smooshes all over your cutting board. Okay, there we go. So we now have our basic album. And if you want to, you can add a piece of twine. I got this from my Christmas one. This was just in my normal stash. And I'm just going to tie it in a double knot at the top. And I have done a lot of inking as well. Let me just grab the album out so you can see what we're making. There we go. So I have here a little bit of twine here, just gives it a nice decorative finish. And I have inked the album as well. So I have made that one from white, exactly the same white cardstock. I'm having a struggle with this knotting today. There we go. I'm just going to trim that off. And then you can move this knot down if you want to, so you can have it just like that. Okay. I don't need this mat anymore. Okay, so this was white and I have inked it. So I have used the creative brushes there. It's like a set of 10, I can't remember how many, and I've also used the Distress Ink in Vintage Photo, and if you have the Distress Oxide Ink in Vintage Photo, that will also work as well, and I know the Walnut is another one that works really well with distressing the edges, so basically, let's just do one side so you can see how easy it is. I'm being mindful now because this video is getting a little long just ink the sides but I do like to mat it first and then ink it and then it just does everything then at the same time like I've done with here okay we can move back to the suitcase now so I've just popped this aside to dry back to the suitcase let's give you some more measurements so we're going to be making a closure and we're going to be making a handle so let's grab the scoreboard out again in a second so this measures i think it's five yes five by half an inch and we are going to score this at half an inch both sides so half an inch there and four and a half here Oh, and I think I'm going to do some inking. Let's do some inking. I can fast forward this bit so that the video is not too long. Again, I'm sticking with the Distress Ink. Okay, and then just to finish off, I'm just going to grab the pad and just run it across the edge there. Doesn't matter if you get a bit messy. Add to that aged look. And I know that the Paddington 
suitcase it's a very simple suitcase it doesn't have all of that those extra straps and buckles and things so I'm just keeping this very very simple here right let's get this handle on so I've got the score lines here now we're just going to fold those upwards and then bone folder again run that across as if you were curling a ribbon and that will curl your cardstock and then we have our handle ready to go on grabby glue I've left the lid off this yep it's still working right you can choose your best side if you have a the side that you prefer I think mine are about the same and then this you will have to just sit and hold it likes to skid um, I think that's central let's straighten that up because I've used the wet glue I can just make sure that everything is straight and move things if I need to so there is our handle there we go and we now have the clasp where have I put it? Here it is. Oh, I've not inked that. This is how a big mess is created when you're just toing and froing and doing everything and then you have a massive mess to clear up afterwards. Okay, I'm going to grab my corner punch. I love this thing. This is going to round the corners for me. I'm just going to do it on all four sides. This one didn't go too straight. There we go. Right. And then, where have I put them? Oh, they're right over here. There we go. I'm using some Velcro super slim stick on dots. I love these. And as you can tell, I do snip into them and I chop them in half. I've already been through one pack of 100 in the last couple of years so that's my second pack okay so this is what we need for the closure and all we have to do is just pop this on do a quick dry run so the it's going to be glued on here where my finger is just there and this is all going to be loose so line everything up again fold that down and now have a little fold line there that I can now line up the edges and get a proper fold. Okay, and then we are going to glue this in place. I'm just going to add glue just to the top section here on the longer section. So the shorter section is what's going to have our Velcro. Actually, I'll do it all at the same time. So I'm going to add my Velcro here. Peel that off and then we need to leave it alone for about five minutes. So get it all straight again, press it down. Okay, and then we're going to leave that alone for about five minutes. So we're going to decorate now. Let's have a closer look at the papers and the ephemera. This is beautiful ephemera. And it, this sold out so fast. It was amazing. Okay, I don't know how many you get in there. Does it say? Uh, no, it doesn't. But we also have stamp sets that match this as well. Got all of these lovely colours here. He influenced the colour of my nails today. I knew I was working with Paddington, so I had to have the red. If you're wondering, it's the Sally Hansen Insta Dry. This dries really fast, but do two coats and it will last a good few days. I'm not into all that gel stuff, so. So, yep, we have all of these beautiful Paddington bear images here. Driving there, up to Mischief. There you go, he's got all the flags there and his hat. And we've got loads of these luggage tags as well, which is going to be perfect for 
uh, little suitcase and I do have here let's just show you the PB now this is actually quite black in his images but I I did want it to be a little bit more subtle and less um, intruding when you visually basically when you look at it so I die cut my letters from the alphabet die set just here um, by Simply Made Crafts and I used craft cardstock with that and then I inked it with some Distress Oxide black soot and that has just taken back some of the colour and not made it so dark that it takes over the whole suitcase if that makes sense and then I finished it off with a little bow okay so then we can just uh, pop these on experiment here pop these on like that glue those on I'm going to save this suitcase for another project because I have my Paddington Bear one here this one's perfect because it's got the book there and this suitcase is perfect for popping in treats if you don't want to make a mini album for this you can pop in loads of treats tea bags will be a lovely little tea party sort of gift as well so decorate that as well if you want to add extra straps and luggage things here if you are doing a different project that will be perfect as well so before I go I just want to show you one more trick with this because I've popped the um, the velcro on now it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare if I try and take that off straight away because I haven't pressed down the bottom layer of the velcro onto the base here it's stuck really well onto the tab not the base so when I try and lift this up it's going to lift it off the base as well it's just gonna be a bit of a nightmare so take a pokey tool or if you have a craft knife something like that get in there lift it up slightly and then get in there with your little tool and separate them as you pull it apart just like that there we go and then just for extra security we're just going to press this down now on the packet it does say it needs proper amount of time to kind of set um, on my old packet did anyway um, I think it's 12 to 24 hours for the full adhesive to kind of cure to the cardstock and then take this one here and then press that down both sides you can see I'm pressing down both sides if you want to use a magnet you can do although I'm like child wary here as well so it's safer to use the velcro it's a bit more annoying but it's safer and then we can just press that down and then we have the velcro now stuck in the right place and hopefully it won't peel off now I've been using this method for years now and all of my velcro fastenings that I do this way are absolutely fine so I'm really happy with how that has turned out so that is my suitcase with the Paddington Bear um, ephemera and papers oh I didn't show you the papers goodness me I've got so much to show you in this today but um, yeah you get cutouts in this as well so let's have a quick look at the papers and then I shall leave you to get on with your day so we have here some cutouts here so again there's loads of uh, samples here on the craft stash website um, on the product pages of the cards that have been made with this as well so there's loads of different things here we also have some repeats here but this one is a smaller version of uh, one of these here so again we have lots of um, options here we've got Paddington reading in bed and some strips here and it was illustrated by Peggy Fortnum and then we're on to the patterned paper now so we have this one here lots of different um, images here these are kind of like blank images so they've just, just taken on the color of the um, the dots that are behind them then we have some more sketches here as well all of his infamous escapades got the London bus there and then we have I like this one this is a lovely one I like the way that it's all um, the occasional black hat as well so we have all of these lovely Paddington Bear sketches on there and then we have the um, luggage tags again you can cut these out as well and I would definitely recommend as we're using oh, the rest of repeats as we're using the white cardstock along with the craft just take your um, 
Distress Ink and then ink around the edges of these. As you can see, that is what I have done there. There should be a colour difference. Not sure if the camera is going to pick that up, but I have gone inked around the edges there and that helps to blend that in as well. Right, so that's definitely everything. So I'm going to save this project and this project for another day. So look out for that tutorial. I'll be choosing a different paper pack for that one. And um, everything that I've used down below, it will be listed down below. And there is also my blog page with the cutting guide for this suitcase and the folding things and everything there. Everything is there. And the video for my other suitcase and mini album and will be listed down below as well. Better put the lid on that, hadn't I? Right, I'm getting very chatty now, so I'm going to love you and leave you, and I'll see you again next time.